with regard to the stuff of mobile, there's a, um, it's an obvious and fabulous channel that does very much the same kind of thing with respect to giving product and consumer of that music or product an opportunity to have an exchange. In many respects, mobile distribution of music has failed. It, it's, it's failed in the sense that it's failed to meet the expectations yeah. of the individual artist and fulfilling the, the individual artist's need to be able to make a living. Most of that money that does, that big chunk that comes off that goes to the copyright holder, doesn't really ever get effectively or successfully to the artist. Sure. That's a whole other discussion. But there are entrepreneurs who have, uh, some of whom I know actually, who have helped to figure out that little mm. conundrum and help artists to make some money and take a little piece in the process mm. and are making, in fact, you know, millions of dollars. So w what I'd like to throw back is the, there's a real issue here that is how does an artist in today's world reach an audience when the big companies, even the big companies who believe in you, that you are the next Beatles in their eyes and they're going to make a deal with you and they're going to help you finance your recording and do what the big labels can do. They don't have the marketing spend capability they used to. And they look to third party sponsors and advertisers to do what they used to do to finance the marketing and really the amplification of your message, your music, your band, the who you are. So what do you do to reach an audience big enough, whatever that may be, whether it's people willing to buy a ticket to see you perform, people <coughs> who are willing to pay to download, bless you, your music, to buy your plastic if you're offering it for sale. These are the, the big challenges as I see it, and that I'm faced with every day. And I, and I make a living actually facing these challenges and, and in some sense being successful at helping to artists and other businesses make money meeting these challenges. What <clears throat> I ask every group of students when I see them is, how do you find your music? What, makes, what turns you on to new music? What makes you want to buy something that you're familiar with but you haven't purchased it yet? And, and I, I get so many different <coughs> answers. It's just confusing. And when I look at the, at the world of the business we're in, I love the spaghetti to the wall. We've all heard it. You know, you throw so much spaghetti to the wall, the stuff that sticks, great. In the biz this business right now, spaghetti's flying everywhere. I mean, everywhere. People think they've scored when it sticks to the floor. Because it's, really, it's, it's, it's just really that chaotic in many, many respects. So what do you do? And, and we, I encourage you all, anybody who's got an idea, if you have a really good one, I'll put you in business. Well, Let I me know, could, I, could I just, yeah. so, Please. so I've been, as I said, I invested in three companies of which I expect I'm going to make money someday. Let me just tell you about <laughs> two of them two, in the music industry, sp very specifically. So Nimbit, it's in Framingham, two Berkeley College grads, really smart people, <coughs> two of the really intuitive business guys. And um, Phil goes to New York every week and plays in his band down in New York City. He keeps offering to drive me down. I said, I don't want to drive back at 2 in the morning. I'm too old but to hear him play. But anyway, they started off when they got going to make tools for independent musicians to um, you know, basically help them out and charge a really small fee. And when they got going, so they raised, yeah, I'm trying to think how much money we put in. More than a million dollars went into the business. Really very conservative with how they spend it. You know, you, you sort of like these guys. They, they struggled with as they, as they used to say, they didn't want to be the man. They didn't want to be that guy that said, I need a piece of the action, you know, when a musician. So they wanted to charge a subscription fee, and they had this thing. It was free if you got the light version, and if you got the pro version, you'd pay $19.95 a month or $25 a month. They actually did pretty well signing people up. They found that it kind of plateaued. Would you tell everybody what that thing is that you got for that? Yeah, so you would get... You know, basically, it would help you manage your email list to your artists. It would um, help you manage. They actually had a back-end fulfillment system for CDs if you still wanted to produce a physical thing. They'd tie you into iTunes, you know, so that everything would get set up. A lot of things that a performing musician would like. And remember, their business is entrepreneurial business to help people out, and they want to get enough money to be successful. 
they discovered after a year or so, and fortunately they figured this out, that that's probably not going to get a return for themselves and their investors. Mm. So they came back to, to all the investors, and um, of which I'm one of them, and said, hey, we need some more money. That usually happens in these things, right? We're gonna run out of money, we need some that's more. A shock. And um, they had this idea, and I think this piece of spaghetti is sticking to the wall. And they said, online merchandising and providing the online merchandising window into every one of these, because every one of these bands has a MySpace page already, and you can put the online merch table directly smack into the middle of the thing. And they, they, they kept throwing, and they said, we need some more money, and those of us that believe that these guys are really smart and they're gonna survive and are gonna figure it out, we give them more money. So that's an example. Yep. Give me another, let me give you another example. I, I was just gonna give yeah, a couple yeah, examples just yeah, to yeah. sort of throw things yep. out there. The, um, uh, Don Rose, who many people know, you know, I tease him and say he's the father of the CD and all that kind of stuff. He's a very humble guy in that regard. Called me up and said, you got to come check this thing out. This is about, oh, I don't know, less than a year ago. He said, and, and I, I had met these guys actually already, but two guys from the Media Lab at MIT, really smart guys. They had figured out, this was their premise, that they could figure out what kind of music you would like without and and categorize music without ever listening to the music it sounds like kind of an interesting principle of all music that's out there basically to go into I think they worked on that over at MIT in the media lab originally but the basic idea was they could analyze sound files with computers oh, yeah. determine the statistics it's, it's companies now called the echo nest it's in New York um, no, they're in Somerville. Oh, okay. um, and they figured that they figured this out. And you know, the thing, the first thing that sort of sticks in people's mind, well, you know, you know, heavy metal sounds kind of like Christian rock when you listen to the sound files. You know, and people probably wouldn't be interested in that stuff. But so what they figured out is, by the way, out on the internet, in the MySpace world, people are blogging and talking. They went out and analyzed the, you know, everything that was said about individual bands and matched it with the audio files. You can actually figure it out. And I listened to these guys talk about it. I thought, what a hell of an idea. Couldn't get it funded till Don hooked up with him, who's a music industry veteran. And he called me and said, you've got to check this stuff out. So I went over to Somerville and in this loft above this thing. They just raised, I think, uh, close to three million bucks in venture capital money to see that dream through. I went to the closing dinner. We think it's going to make it. You know, cool idea. Yeah. Give you a third one. One of the guys that was at Groove that split because we invested all this money in doing what we call off-portal services. Those you've seen those text message, text things. You get a text message back. Yeah. For in, for individual bands to be able to stand, I saw this thing on YouTube. They've set it up. It's called Adva Mobile. They've been going around the local area. You get a short code, you know, five-digit code you get from the telephone company. It allows you to put a certain amount of money in somebody's cell phone bill if you do it. And they get these bands that basically will stand up in their performance and say, you know, text Aerosmith or something shorter like that to one, two, three, four, five, and bang, your cell phone hits, you can download a song, either promotionally or you can pay for it. Cool idea. So there's a lot. So that's what I said. I mean, I, I was not in any means saying anything other than, you know, you want to think about how you can make money. And if you're going to try it, you want to try to be really capital efficient. I mean, as I said, we sold Groove Mobile for 15 million bucks. By the way, if you know you were an investor and you only only cost you a million bucks to put it in, that'd be pretty good. Mm. These guys invested in 2000; they put about 30 million dollars in. They were happy to get half their money mm. back. Right. If you guys are doing things entrepreneurially, you want to be thinking about getting a return. Mm. 